Okay, so, hi, I'm Adam. And I am going to fly through in 10 minutes what normally takes about an hour, and I've made a very small subset of this idea of how is the moving world going to be reimagined for the next, say, 50 years. I am originally an engineer turned entrepreneur who became an inadvertent investor 25 years ago, and that's led me on this journey. So one of the things that's sort of an inexorable fact is that every time we have a transformation in a modality of transportation, economies explode. So if you look back, I don't know, 1560 when Shakespeare was born, he never moved three miles beyond his house. Everybody here took some advanced form of transportation to get here, and it has directly impacted the creation of much larger global economies. However, there's a really weird byproduct that you probably haven't thought much about, which is that mobility has not changed in 60 years. Airplanes fly the same speed. They use the same fuels. They use approximately the same engines. Cars are not really fundamentally different. There's some safety systems and things like that. But nothing has happened. There was a real Cambrian explosion from the turn of the century in 1900 up to about 1960. And then it kind of stopped. And the most important thing to take away from this is not only is the technology the same, but the human workload is the same. The, the ability for, to add safety, to add automation, has not fundamentally changed. And here's a really good case in point. If in the center is the Boeing 737, and many of you have flown on 737s routinely, it's the second most uh, produced airplane in the world's history, on the left is the Wright Flyer in 1903. The, in, the introduction of the 737 is closer to the Wright Flyer than it is to present day. So when I say nothing has changed, nothing has changed. The other giant problem that a lot of people aren't cognizant about is that transportation is the largest contributor to greenhouse gases in the world. And it's a problem that is not abating, and it's going to get worse, not better, not because people aren't thinking about it, not because people aren't well-intentioned and working hard, but rather that it's very, very hard to decarbonize transportation as compared to other industries. So as a fraction of total emissions, transportation is going to continue to evolve and continue to grow unless we do something about it. So I have had a long and weird career, which I won't go into here, but three years ago, some friends and I decided that, to go solve this problem. And what we've done is we've built the largest firm in the world focus solely on mobility. We have a definition of what that means. It means that we want to move people and goods cleaner, faster, safer, with lower impact on land, sea, air, and space. And what we're focused on is how do we bring the enabling technologies to market? Because the problem, as I said, is getting worse, not better. If you look at where we are headed, emissions are growing. If you look at the right, this is what we've all signed up to as governments and corporations to reduce the emission profile in the same time frame. It's not happening. So I get asked all the time, what's the answer? What, what is the technology going to, is it AI? It's like, of course, no, it's not AI. What it is, though, is everything. And there's a bunch of things that have matured approximately simultaneously. And that is what's going to enable this transformation. So if you think about, the level of, of, of autonomy, the inexorable slide toward electrification, the, the connectivity, AI, all of these specific things have come together and matured at a moment that enables you to create radically different solutions. So I'm going to talk a little bit really quickly about cars, planes, and space. Just a couple of really interesting examples. So BYD, you all know it, came relatively out of nowhere to become the largest EV company in the world. That's not what's interesting. What's interesting is that they are on the right side of physics. The best internal combustion engine is, is roughly 40 to 43% thermodynamically efficient. It can't be better. A really bad electric motor is 98% efficient. 
A really good electric motor, like in a Tesla, is about 99.3% efficient. So by definition, first principles, everything that can be electrified is going to be electrified. Second thing is, you look at Tesla, you think, wow, I have a Tesla, it's screwed together kind of badly, things don't line up, it's, a, it's not the best car I've ever driven. They're not a car company. They're a technology conglomerate, and they're starting with materials, and they're moving to energy, and they're moving through the, the, uh, the implementation and the delivery of energy through cars, through housing, through solar, and capturing value along the way. It's a really interesting model. The other thing I want to talk on for a second is autonomy. We all thought we'd have autonomy by now. It is an incredibly intractable problem, but it's happening in at least controlled environments or well-mapped environments. And again, the data is, in, is incontrovertible, which suggests that autonomous vehicles are dramatically more safe than their human counterparts. So for those of you who've had a chance to ride in a Waymo or some of the other people that are actually coming to market, it's impressive. Space. In my lifetime, I was completely captivated by the Apollo program. Never occurred to me in a million years that this would become the purview of private industry. I'm sure many of you just watched the Starship uh, Test Flight 4 and, and marveled at something the size of the Empire State Building going up and coming down. Um, there's a lot going on here that's really remarkable, not the least of which is private space in China. There are at least six competitors to SpaceX that are delivering today, that are flying today, that are reusable today, and this is becoming a global phenomenon. Uh, earlier, Marcelo said that the cost of data was approximately zero after the, the growth of the internet. <coughs> the cost of a kilo to orbit has gone from a million dollars to a hundred thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars if Starship's successful, tens of dollars. Here's a couple companies to watch. Interestingly, Blue Origin is interesting primarily because they're building the largest rocket engine since the Apollo program. And on the right, Stoke has a really ambitious idea to create a single stage to orbit vehicle that can fly many times a day, not many times a month or a year. <coughs> All right, flying things. As I said, probably many of you took a plane to get here. But what you probably don't realize is that 80% of the world's population has never been on an airplane. There's an enormous market yet to be developed all over the world. If I asked you, are electric planes viable? You might say, hmm, I don't know. And if I asked you when the first electric vehicle in the air reliably flew, you'd probably say like 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Actually, no, it was 1884. And it flew all the time. But then nothing happened for about 100 years. And what's happened right now is there's been this fantastic, incredible multiplication of force and talent and engineering to bring electric vertical takeoff and landing craft to market. Uh, I, the, 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 the folks represented here, Eve, coming out of Embraer in Brazil, Archer, Lili, uh, Beta, and Joby, are of the 400 vehicles that people are building, the market leaders by far. I would encourage you to research them. They bring the utility of a helicopter and the ability to fly hundreds of miles quietly, super efficiently. In fact, Beta set a record last year of doing, flying across country in 300 mile legs. Each leg costs $17. So you're suddenly changing the fuel equation, you're changing the convenience equation. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the curve of efficiency of these electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. And the, dotted, the upper dotted line is a car. They're more efficient than cars. This is coming. The last thing, I talked about the 737 and how it had remained essentially a constant for the last, I don't know, 60 years. This is really interesting. This is efficiency through morphology, efficiency through shape. And this is an idea that was actually conceived in the 1980s, but we didn't have the technology to build it. It's called the blended wing body. And there are two companies building blended wing bodies today, uh, Jet Zero and Airbus. They, are, they will be flying in two to three years in the prototype form, but they are 50% more efficient. And they don't rely on any kind of invention. They don't need a different engine or a different fuel source or different infrastructure at an airport. 
just the shape suddenly gets you to a level of efficiency that people haven't imagined or let themselves imagine for a long time. Drones, you probably don't think much about this either. There are massive numbers of drones flying in the sky, but Walmart and Google have gotten together and they're building the largest drone delivery network in the world, and it's remarkable how incredibly useful it is. Average delivery time is about five minutes to go six miles. People are ordering multiple times a day. You're going to see this all throughout the United States very soon. Um, there's a reason for it. If you order something online today, it costs a lot of money in human capacity, in energy, in wear and tear on roads to have somebody bring you something in a car. Drones are a third of the cost, and that will go to cents fairly quickly. So it's a really interesting space. So that brings me to the very end, and I have just a few seconds left to do it. What I'd like to say is this is a $10 trillion market. There is nobody thinking about this. Everything is changing from the smallest scooter to space travel and everything in between. We've seen 6,000 companies in three years, and there's some truly transformative things coming to your future to make your mobility easier, to create uh, joy and convenience in your life, but most importantly, to expand the global economy. Thank you so much.